Hello, students. I welcome you all to Integrated Science Form 2. I am your presenter, Patrick Chumesi. I believe everybody is doing well, so we give thanks to the Almighty God. Our discussion for today is going to be on acids, base, and salt. But since time is not on our side, we are limiting our topic today on acids. These are the objectives that we would achieve by the end of the lesson. One is that we should be able to define an acid. Then also we state the physical chemical properties of acids. Then three, describe the basicity of an acid. Then the last is to state the uses of acids. You would all side with me that when you take in an orange, or it could even be lemon, or even tangerine, any of the citrus family, or even the fruit, that is not right. You will feel a taste that is normally not pleasant or welcome. And that taste is sad. This is due to the acid it contains. When we talk of an acid, what then is an acid? An acid is a compound which contains hydrogen and it produces hydrogen ions as the only positive ions when dissolved in water. So if we look at the chemical equation here, this side on the stream left is that of the HCl, that's the hydrochloric acid. When it's dissolved in water, it produces the hydrogen ions and also the other anion, which is the chlorine. But the hydrogen ion here is the only positive ion, and that is making it to be an acid. Aside this, there are other acceptable definitions that Wayek do accept, and also everybody welcomes that for definition for acid. One is by the concept of Brosted glory. He defines an acid as the proton donor. And this is the simplest form to which everybody, if you go with that one, it will help. Just a proton donor, or it could be that of hydrogen ion donor. There's also another concept by Aino's concept. He defines an acid as a compound which forms or gives hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. Now, let's look at the properties. First, we're going to deal with the physical properties of acids. The very first one is the sour taste that I did talk of. When you take in a substance that contains acid, normally the organic ones, because they are the very ones that we do consume, concentrated acid is harmful to which it's not good to taste. So when you take in substance like fruits, that is not right and it contains acid, it tastes sour. That's the very first one. Then the second one is that with litmus, that's the litmus paper. Uh, I have a piece one here, that's the blue litmus paper. When you dip this one into a solution or even a substance that is of acid, it will change the blue color to red color. To this, I would like to demonstrate. This is orange, which is on right. And I've cut through this, or I've made a section through this. So look, if you put it inside, you will find out that the color has changed from blue to red. And that's an indication that this orange, which is on right, contains acid. Then there are other physical properties in addition. Acids also are very corrosive. They also have pH that is less than 7. When you go to the pH scale, from 0 to that of 14, we know the neutral point is 7. But anything below the 7 talks of it as acid. Then we have graduation to that. Very soon we will come to acid-based indicators. And you get to know that we have strong acids, weak acids, and then we have the neutral, then we go to the alkaline. 
but acids they have pH less than seven. Then they are also soluble in water. In addition, they turn universal indicators orange or that of red. Then also they are electrolytes that they do conduct electricity. That's why the car batteries, you see there's a liquid in that, and that liquid is made up of acid and it aids in conduction of electricity. Now, let's look at some of the chemical properties. With the chemical properties, the very first one is talking about acids react with carbonates. And the carbonate here could be even the hydrogen carbonate of salt, or even carbonate of compounds, any other compound. And when there's a reaction to that, it produces salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So then too, we are privileged to have an equation here. This is sodium hydrogen carbonate in aqueous form with reacting to that of the HCl, hydrochloric acid. These are the products. We have the salt here, which is sodium chloride, then the carbon dioxide and water. Two. Other chemical property here is that of acids react with bases or even alkali to produce salt and water. And this is a process that we call neutralization reaction. With this, we have the ACL here. It's not only ACL, you can even have sulfuric acid or any other acid like the nitric acid. But I'm using the HCl. Plus that of an alkali, which is sodium hydroxide. The products here are that of sodium chloride and water. This is a typical neutralization reaction. Then the last one that I have here for the chemical properties of acids is that it reacts with metals to produce gases. And this gas here that I'm talking of is not any other gas but that of hydrogen gas. So you have zinc here which is a metal. You can also have other metal like that of sodium. Could also be potassium, calcium, or any of the metals. When there's a reaction with that of acid, like the HCl here, you have the product to be that of zinc chloride, which is salt, then that of the hydrogen gas that I did talk of. We look at the strengths of acids. The strength here is looking at the ability of the acid to dissolve said that when it dissolves in solution or water, would release that of hydrogen ions, whether with ease or with some difficulty. And based on that, some of these acids do dissolve easily in water to release that of the hydrogen ions completely. Others also do find it difficult to do that. And therefore, the strength, we have two of the classification in terms of the strengths of the acids. One is that we are strong acids, and the other one will be that of weak acids. But let's look at what a strong acid is. This is an acid that ionizes or dissolves completely in aqueous solution to release hydrogen ions. And this one is done with ease. So, on the board here, you will see this nitric acid. When it dissociates or ionizes, it gives that of the hydrogen ions and that of the nitrate here. And this one is done with it, and that is making it to be that of strong acid. This is not the only one. We have other examples. Some could also be that of inorganic in form. And a typical one could be that of the nitric acid, or could also be that of the sulfuric acid, the H2SO4. Then, the other acid, based on the strength, is that of the weak acids. These ones, they ionize, or dissociate partially in aqueous solution to release the hydrogen ions. And this is done with some level of difficulty. It's not at ease as we compared that one to that of the uh, strong acid. And this is what I mean if I talk of 
with difficulty. Here, yeah, this is an organic acid. And this organic acid here is that of ethanoic acid. When it dissociates in aqueous solution, it's giving you that of the hydrogen ions. Then we have that of another compound here, which also is having H here. And this one is called that of, uh, if you look at it, you see that this H here, you couldn't have all the H here being dissociated to give you only H plus. Unlike the one we had in the strong acid, like this. But if you look at the other product form for the weak acid, you see there's addition of what? H to this compound. And this is making this acid, which is the ethanoic acid, to be that of a weak acid. So normally, they do not dissociate easily in the pure solution to release the hydrogen ions. That's not only example. We have other inorganic acids that are also weak acid, like the H2SO3 there. Now, let's look at some of the examples of acids. And here we would also we'll look at their sources. One is that of citric acid. And as the name talks of it, we can conclude that it's from citrus. And if you say that one, you are right. And the citric acid is indeed obtained from citrus, not only that one, from other fruits. Then we have methanoic acid. This also is obtained from bees. Normally if you have a bite or a stench from that of bees or even bites from that of ants, you can have that of the methanoic acid. Then we have malic acid, that one also is from apples. Then tartaric acid from grapes. Acetic acid almighty vinegar, normally ethanol, ethanoic acid. So you get vinegar, and it's from vinegar. Then we have lactic acid. Anything lactic is about that of dairy product, milk. So lactic acid is looking at acid from that of sour milk. Then we have continuation to that butanoic acid which is also from rancid butter. Normally, if you put your butter there for a longer period, it tends to be rancid, not, and that rancidity, if you check from it, you will find out that it contains some acid, and that acid is butanoic acid. Then we have oleic acid, palmitic acid, and ascorbic acids. All of them also with the sources there. Then, let's look at some of the inorganic acids and their sources. The very first one there is the HCl, hydrochloric acid. With this, normally we all know when there is digestion in the stomach, there is release of an acid. And that acid is coming from the walls of the stomach, which is the HCl. So this is a source to hydrochloric acid, that's from the stomach. Then also we can have some salt like sodium chloride also there. Then we have triozonitrate 5 acid. This one also we can get it from sodium nitrate. Then tetraozosulfate 6 acid. That one could also be obtained from sodium sulfate. Then triozocarbonate 4 acid. That one could also be obtained from soft drinks. Normally, the drinks like that of Fanta, the Coke, if you open them, you find out that they bubble. Those ones, they also contain an acid, which is inorganic in form. Then also we have tetra phosphate 5 acid also there. Let's look at basicity of an acid. The basicity of an acid is looking at the number of hydrogen atoms per mole in a molecule of an acid that can be replaced by a metal in a solution. And here, what do I mean? If I talk of basicity of an acid, if you look at something like the HCl here, you find out that it's having only hydrogen to be one, and therefore the basicity is one. 
if you look at that of the nitric acid, also the hydrogen here also is one. Then the basicity is one. Same also applies to this um, caloric acid. Then we have another one also, the sulfuric acid here. Since it's having two of the hydrogen atoms here, the basicity is two because it's this one that could be replaced off by that of a, a metal. Then we have the carbonic acid here, also it's having two. So together, the sulfuric acid, then the hydrocarbonate acid here, they do all have basicity to be two. Then we have this H3PO4, that's the phosphoric acid. It's having the basicity to be three. I believe you do understand what is meant by basicity. As we gradually come to an end, we are also going to look at the uses of acids. And with the uses, I have it in general because we've lumped all together. But I'll make some specification to the types. For example, the very first one is looking at acids are used in the manufacture of fertilizers. And typical acid that is used here is that of the nitric acid. So nitric acid is a good source that we can use for the manufacture of fertilizer. Then also, acids are also used in dissolving metals or to remove rust. And a typical example is that of the HCl or even that of the nitric acid. Then three is looking at, they are used as electrolytes and here to conduct electricity. If you could remember, we made mention of acids, they are used to conduct electricity based on the properties, the physical properties. And if you look at that of the uses, there it lies, that's the, the electrolyte. So the car battery, the liquid there is one, and that one is sulfuric acid. Then also they are used as drying agents. And a typical example is that of the sulfuric acid. The uses in continuation, also used in oil refineries. We can have the sulfuric acid, we have the hydrofluoric acids also being used. Then they are also used in the production of salt, soft drinks, drugs, and the making of baking powder. We have examples being listed there, the hydrochloric acid and also sulfuric acid. Then they are also used as food preservatives to preserve food. And not only that, also for making of antiseptics. We have examples as that of tartaric acid and the benzoic acid also there. Then Another use is that of the manufacture of dyes, detergents, soaps, explosives, and even used in the textiles industry. Nitric acid is there. There is also another acid called the bile acid. So you know, as we come to the end of today's discussion, this is the summary of what we've talked about. We've gotten to know the definition for acid, which is looking at a compound that contains hydrogen and it produces the hydrogen ions as the only positive ions when dissolved in water. Then we did also look at the physical properties of acids. Here, these are some of the examples that we made mention of. The TESA, they tend that of blue litmus paper to red, the one that I illustrated with you. Then they also are concentrated in form and therefore they are corrosive. They have pH less than seven. They are soluble in water. We also look at some of the chemical properties. 
and we made mention of their reaction with the carbonate uh, or the carbonate salt to produce salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Then also when it's reacted with that of alkali in the neutralization reaction, it produce or they produce that of uh, salt and water. Then in the reaction with metals, there's the liberation of hydrogen gas. That's the release of hydrogen gas. We did also look at the basicity of an acid. And we said that is looking at the number of hydrogen atoms that could be replaced by a metal in the solution. Then we look at the uses, to which the uses we made mention of use in the manufacture of fertilizer, also making detergents as a dissolving agents. We also made mention of being electrolytes and the others that we made mention of. All too soon, this is the end of our discussion today. I have some assignment for you that I want you to try your hands on. And we have three of the questions. The very first question is looking at definition for acid. Then also you give two examples. Then also two, you state two chemical properties and three physical properties of acids. Then the last one is you name the product formed from the reaction between hydrochloric acid and that of sodium hydroxide. Thank you for having me. We'll meet again another time. Bye-bye.